Hello, friends, and welcome to the Cinemondo podcast with Kathy, Mark, and Burke. Talking and about Jones, me. barking in the background. Oh, <laughs> special we guest. Get, we, we get special Jones guest, Jones. From interview. We'll have Jones and Darwin, you know, <laughs> yeah. enter the fray. <laughs> the dog interviews. Yeah. So yeah. we want to talk about a, a great director who uh, had a career that spanned, like, what, 50 years, maybe even more? Yeah. Yeah, and, you know, Through he started all the out great as, eras of yeah. film. Actually, he touched yeah. all of them, I think. Yeah. yeah, and he started out as an editor. He edited some classic films, some of the most classic, and then he moved on and did some film noir stuff. Then into bigger budget Hollywood films of all different types of genres. Yeah, yeah. So, um, and a lot of times he's not mentioned up there with you know whatever Hitchcock and you know some of the Kubrick. But when you think of the movies he's made, you're pretty impressed with yeah. uh, what he's accomplished, what a career he had. It was, it was pretty yeah. incredible. I think one of the reasons why you don't hear him in those lists, you know, people talk about Kubrick, you say Kubrick, and that means that's basically a genre in and of itself. Same with Hitchcock. That's a genre. When you say it's like a Hitchcock film, or it's like a Kubrick film, or it's Kubrickian or Hitchcockian yeah. or whatever, the thing about the, our, the director we're talking about today, whose name I'm going to go ahead and drop, Robert Wise. Everybody <laughs> should be hip yeah. to the wise. Yeah. But um, the thing about him is you can't say it's a Robert Wiseian film because he didn't do just one kind of film. He didn't, yeah. he didn't really seem to have his own style, which is interesting. The only consistent thing in his movies was that they were all excellent and all really good at being what they Whatever. were <laughs> what they were yeah. totally different from the one that came before it i mean he did science fiction he did musicals he did horror he did film noir like you said and he you know nothing you can't look at um a couple of you know take two of his films and put them together and say that's wait that's the same director that's <laughs> Yeah, it's not like Brian De Palma, you know, a De Palma right. film. Right. You know? Yeah. So exactly. before we get into that, and totally he excelled real quick. Like he he didn't yeah. just do them well. He like made a iconic, incredibly yeah. memorable films the, the, that we've oh, all heard of. Yeah. Crazy. Yes. Like the yeah. iconic one of each yeah. one of these genres. That, like you talk about musicals. What's the first musical that pops into your mind? Yeah. Or what's on the list of scariest movies of all time? Chance so he directed it. <laughs> yeah, or best science fiction film from yeah. the 50s or, you know. Before we get into that fully, let's just remind our viewers to consider becoming a member of the Cinemondo YouTube channel. Emojis, member shout outs, priority replies, yeah. badges. That's $2.99 a month. For $4.99 a month, you get all that plus the member request video. You can request a video and we will uh, get to it and talk about <laughs> we'll it. Get and, to and, it. And, yeah. <laughs> it's Eventually. a lot of like, <laughs> yeah. And we also have a Slack channel where you can go on and uh, chit chat with us. And uh, it's a great community that's uh, ever growing. So yeah, please consider doing that. We would appreciate it. It's a good idea. Yeah, yeah it's fun. It's so fun. let's talk about uh, Robert Wise. I mean, it is kind of hard to start, uh, but yeah. maybe it makes sense chronologically to go yeah. back to he started out as an editor back in the 30s. And one of the great one of the what's considered maybe the greatest film of all time for many people is Citizen Kane. And mm -hmm. he was an editor on that film. So that's not yeah. a bad way to sort of kind of get your feet wet, work on a yeah. classic film like that with with Orson Welles. Yeah, and I think Orson Welles didn't really appreciate or approve of him all that much. Oh. But he was, uh, um, he was, I mean, he worked, Robert Wise was young at the time, worked for the studios, and I think was told, all right, cut this, this, and this. And he did what he was paid to do. And unfortunately, right. it wasn't what, or Orson Welles oh. wanted, and with the with the Magnificent Ambersons and all that too. That yeah. was, you know, it's really it's sad in one way, but in another way, it's like Citizen Kane is still considered one of the best movies ever made, yeah. if not number one on so many people's lists. Even with all those problems, yeah, yeah, it and, still uh, it works, you know. And but that that soured Orson Welles too, obviously, especially the Magnificent yeah. Ambersons, where it was really chopped up, and he hated it, and he sort yeah. of just said, you know, forget Hollywood. He kind of went off and you know, um, yeah. got into other stuff, you know, and eventually mm -hmm. came back with Touch of Evil and a bunch of other stuff. So, yeah, um, yeah poor but, you know, Wells, he was sort of defined by his, by what he considered to be his failure to do, to, to create his art the way he wanted. But yeah. I think with Robert Wise, he sort of went with it. He just sort of jumped in and 
you know, did everything that came his way. I th not everything. I'm sure he turned things down. He did, took he, everything. <laughs> he was like, you know, a musical. Okay, I'll okay, try I'll it. Try we'll it. see what happens. And he made the best musical ever. And, you know, in the Which 50s, was? it was like, um, The Hills Are Alive with The... The Sound of Music. You know. And when you think of that film, like, you know, you can say, well, it's kind of unabashedly kind of cheesy and whatever, but everybody watches the movie so yeah. you settle in and it's the ultimate comfort food. You have a smile on your face because it's so well done for what it is. You know, is. Yeah. I'm not a musical and fan of, of, of musicals, but this is one that we kind of grew up with. Yeah. You know, it's in I'm, line I'm, with Wizard of Oz and things like that. You know, I'm not a huge fan of musicals, but I'm a huge fan of music. And Rodgers and Hammerstein, you know, the the, the songwriters on, on this also did so many other great things and it you can't you can't go wrong with that music and yeah the, the <laughs> yeah. songs are just great you know right. and, and just that and, photo makes you just want to run and go yeah the hills are alive yeah. <laughs> yeah i'm not even gonna i'm gonna try and sing you just did <laughs> no no that was yelling <laughs> but um yeah but of course they did oklahoma rogers hammers in oklahoma yeah and, i mean you know music man. which i, mean, I have to you know, i have to know. jump in for a second i just my wife and i just um this week saw the uh, stage presentation of Oklahoma. We went really? to the theater hmm. here in Los Angeles and we saw Oklahoma. It, it, it's not Robert Wise. This is sort of off on a tangent, but it's Rodgers and Hammerstein. But um, I recommend it. I actually didn't think I was going to like it, but I say um, Oklahoma wasn't really top. Well, of my the list. songs are great. I mean, the yeah. songs are you come out of there like they say mm. you come out of there singing the songs for the rest of the week. <laughs> you do. You and do. It was a very tradition. It was beautifully produced. It was a very traditional. Um, the music wasn't updated. It, you know, it wasn't like the hip hop version of real yeah, Oklahoma. Like you, you just go with the classic and do it. It was you know? a class. They had a classic <laughs> old timey band, you know, a, yeah. kind of thing. And the music was, was great. And it's those songs, I think that maybe got Robert Wise interested in doing um, sound of music. It's the music is beautiful. And the movie is about music. Right. So about it's, a, it's the about the power music. of music. <laughs> Yeah, and, and so the the idea is that the music tr music um, wins. You know what I mean? And I think well, he, that maybe what made it appealed to him about that. Well, it was, you know, it wasn't was, just people breaking into oh, sorry breaking into song. It was actually the whole thing was about them being in a you know a singing group, and so they sang as performing you know for yeah, guests at their house and just for fun and the nanny training them. And so it was it didn't feel like that artificial like I'm going to start singing now. You know, but they also did sing in their daily lives. You know, like she you yeah. know sixteen going on seventeen or seventeen going on thirty or whatever she was. The um. The the mu the music was a part of it, and it and it really kind of made you feel like I'm a there. This is their imaginary life, you know. It wasn't like suddenly the the sets open up and there's a there's yeah. a stairway and there's dancers. It was they were singing in in the set, you know, and so you can kind of imagine in that way. It's one of those kind of non f super fantastical musicals. Yeah. Well, the interesting made it a real story too. You can watch it as a real story. Yeah. And he made that in 65. And of course, four yeah. years earlier, he made another musical completely different. Yes. Uh, in, in, you know, in 1961 called West Side Story, which is another classic musical, but it's completely different. You know, it's a Jerome Robbins play and, you know, yeah. and he actually, Jerome Robbins directed all the dance and you know, musical numbers and Robert Wise right. story. And of course, this is much more theatrical. It's even in weirdly kind of, you know, it there's it's weirdly dated because the casting they have, you know, Natalie Wood is playing a Puerto Rican girl. You know, there's right, some weird yeah. things in there that's kind of of its time. But it's still it's a magical film. If you watch it, you go, oh my God, it's just like it's just yeah. bursting with energy and excitement. The songs yeah. are great. And it and also again, it takes place in real sets. You know, it's not like these fantastical sets. One of the things that may have been appealing to him about it is the fact that they wanted to stage it in the streets, you know, in the real right. streets. And it does have this kind of gritty edge to it, even though the actors are wearing, you know, sort of, you know, makeup and a couple of other questionable things by today's standards. <laughs> well, they but, tried to make it right with Spielberg, but he didn't have that quite that same magic. But I heard it was pretty good. Right. I didn't see that one. I watched like first 20 minutes and I said, this is good, but I don't feel like watching it. So right. that was <laughs> I'm not, I, again, musicals nice. are very yeah. hard to tell. 
I mean, it's Especially one thing to be at three hours. It's a little it's a like, lot, wow. and it's yeah. just musicals. And I'm just, eh. I and, you know, know it's one story. thing to watch an Indian film and have one song or two songs, but it's another right. to have like ten songs. Like, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> But, but you know, if the music is good, you're it's almost like you're watching a movie and listening to an album, you know, to me, yeah. if I if yeah. I like the songs like I like the music to the Rogers and Hammerstein stuff, it, it, you know, it's undeniable that the music is good. And I know that was a part of Robert. Well, I just have a feel. I don't know. I haven't. I'm haven't sure it was. Him, but... I mean, yeah, he, he made two of the greatest musicals, but then you yeah. shift to like a totally completely. If you want to yeah. make musicals over here on one side and what's on the other side. Well, it could be science fiction, maybe. Let's do that next. <laughs> yeah. So all of a sudden, you go, okay, science fiction. What did he direct in the in the genre of science fiction? Only one of the classic, classic sci-fi films of all time, you know. And I would suggest another couple that are quite good too. So yeah, um, I'll mention from 1951, the day the Earth stood still, which is just yeah. iconic. Yes. It's an iconic mm -hmm. sci-fi film. It's one of the earliest ones that was sort of a serious yeah. science fiction film. Um, <laughs> it's not, you know, it's, there is obviously a robot and an alien and a UFO, but it's not, it's serious. They're talking about serious yeah. stuff here. It's very adult. Not campy. Very, very smart. And uh, it's, it's a film you can watch today and it's beautifully directed. I yeah. think it's, it's wonderful. Even the effects, like when the, the yeah. uh, UFO lands in Washington, that looks pretty darn good, especially for something that's 70 years old, you know? Yeah. yeah. It really is a great movie. It's a, the characters in it are great. Patricia Neal is really good. It's, uh, you, you know, Michael Rennie, of course, he's, he's got such gravitas as Klaatu, you know, and he yeah. shows up, you really believe that this guy is superior, you know, he's been around the block galaxy wise, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? <laughs> he's been around the block. He's uh, he knows what he's talking about and yes. you trust him and, and uh, he has this power and the humans are human. It's one of those movies that that um, I think <laughs> was a little controversial at the time because some people thought that it was it's like, uh, what are you trying to put human beings down? You know, <laughs> yes, <And> it was, <laughs> because uh, they yeah. deserve it. It's yeah, like, it's like the hum humanity just, is not painted very beautifully. Just this, saying, but. humanity is so great sometimes. Well, and if, if that actually happened in a UFO land, I think we it would be more like that. You know what I happened? I think it would, as, as opposed Shoot to first, what happened in uh, Close Encounters. I don't know. Um, well, every, like everything else, we'd be divided into two camps. One would be, you know, he's a he's a reptoid. He's come here to eat us and kill us and take away our rights and take away our this and this. Or maybe he's all right. You know. Yeah, like um, you know, humanity is uh, can fail, and the, the idea that uh, <laughs> we're not perfect, no. and that we start, we do start wars, and we have horrible, we do th horrible things to each other. But there's a line in there. I think it's it, he says, you know, you're at your best when things are at their worst, or something along those lines. Was that Starman, which, or was that this movie, <laughs> or both? In, could be both sort of similar movies but i yeah. i remembered it in this one for some reason but i could be wrong i do remember jeff bridges saying it but it could have been an homage to this film yeah well it's or it's it could it's have the, been just in that one or the wise, wise directed <laughs> but it's yeah. kind of the idea in this movie but yeah. but you know in recent years that's been kind of proven false <laughs> right <laughs> unfortunately yeah. but yeah, that's for sure. Half of us are are at our best when things are worse. <laughs> the other half are running around saying, you know, I hate, I hate you, I hate you. I they're hate not, you. they're not being very helpful. Who could that the, other half be? Yeah. <laughs> but you know, another science fiction film that he directed, which again is completely different. Yeah. And one and that in a completely different me, era. Yeah. Completely different era, and it's a film that really is close to my heart because I saw it used to be on TV when I was about yeah. ten or eleven or twelve, and there wasn't a lot of science fiction, big budget sci-fi that you could watch, at least that I could watch. But this film, The Andromeda Strain, was a, a, based on a Michael Crichton book. It's very yeah. sort of mm -hmm. scientific. It's got incredible production design. It has this look that's very sleek and very kind of sci-fi yeah. in a certain way. And I remember one scene in the movie that always stuck with me is like. The cutting open a dead body, a, yes. a wrist, and yeah. they cut the, the and and the blood is powdery. It's like it's right, so, it just, just pours out like sand. Oh, so. yeah. And I remember like whoa, like I was blown away by that. I, so that cool. still sticks with me as a great yeah. independent individual scene. I think That's that so movie good. is like really a list look, you know. Yeah, and uh, it, it just still holds up. Yeah.
And, and it's a, a um, it's a real scientific movie too. Right. I like that it's a it's a it's a science fiction film. It's like a procedural. Mm -hmm. It's um, I love how it goes through the process of of the science. Michael Crichton, of course, was a doctor and he had done research, so he knew how things worked in that in those realms. But mm -hmm. I, there was a there was kind of a trend at the time for films that were sort of procedural about things like there was another one called the Satan Bug. It was kind of similar. The Colossus, the Forbin Project. That Forbin, was sort of the like, Col yeah. Forbin Project, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. But this one had a had a real procedure. Like it showed how they get how they go into this quarantine, how they get decontaminated, how they go through the process of you know getting the people together to do this research, and then through the process of the research, how they rule things out. I love that they. Yeah. They go through all these scientific procedures and they rule this out and then they rule that out. And the, and the way they sort of zero in on what is happening is so suspenseful. It's, <laughs> yeah. it's, it's stuff this big, but it's, there's so much suspense in this yeah. film. I love very it. well directed. Yeah. So good. And, and then, very um, different for its time. It very new... different. And then he did another sci-fi film, you know, that came out in the late seventies. That was very, you know, talk about anticipation. You know, yes. this was when Star Wars was, you had come out a few years, you know, close encounters. So here comes the reboot of the classic Star Trek series. And he does. Yeah. Star comes. In 1979. <laughs> Boom. There is Persons <laughs> Combata, the late Persons Combata. And of course, yeah. uh, you know, uh, Kirk and uh, Spock. Um, this was this was an interesting film because I remember seeing it like opening day and I, you know, I had Star Wars in my brain. I didn't have yeah. Star Trek in my brain and I came out disappointed. Uh -huh. I've yeah, I was like, huh, that was just. Uh, I, but I've seen it on subsequent and I'm, it's a much better film. But my first initial thing was that sometimes you go and expecting something. I was expecting a lot of whiz bang, you know, Klingons right. and all this kind of stuff, and it was not. That was like the Wrath of Khan kind of brings that. Yeah, you know, Wrath like of Khan gives yeah. you. Yeah, this is I different. I love this movie. I remember seeing it. I saw it with uh, the first time I saw it was with my friend Mark Maddox, who's been on the podcast a bunch of times. Uh, Mark and I are big, you know, Star Trek nerds back back when that came out, you know, still are. But when this movie came out, we both went and we went and saw it again. And I just I loved it. I thought it it had that that style that kind of the Andromeda strain style where it was almost like a procedural mm -hmm. where it was. um I, there, a lot of people complain about it. They say it doesn't have the the vibe, the feel, the action, the color, the excitement of yeah. the series. But, you know, and some people call it Star Trek, the motionless picture. And <laughs> I, I feel like it's a... That's pretty good. <laughs> I think it's a... I love it. I just love that movie. I think it's really... It's putting the gang back together again. And the whole yeah. idea of, you know, you know, Kirk putting the... Getting the band back together... And going out on a on a massive adventure, and it was like you said, not quite as Star Trekky as the Wrath of Khan was the yeah. next film, or the next one, or the next one, or from then on, really. But the um, it was it was that sort of cool version of the future, that clean, yeah, um, yeah. Quiet. I think you know Gene Roddenberry <laughs> was directly involved in this, unlike a lot of the later films. Mm -hmm. Um, but this was kind of Gene Roddenberry's vision of the future. He want it, the, it came from an idea that they had for a new TV series called Star Trek phase two. And a lot of the production design and stuff was held over, left over from that and used mm -hmm. from that and the ideas and the characters and things like that. But Robert Wise took it and made it into kind of a Gene Roddenberry vision but it also has that Robert Wise um, attention to detail and quality to it, and I just I love it. I love well, a lot of grand, yeah. it felt grander. I remember the first time yes. you see the Enterprise, you know, yes. like oh, you right. know that kind of stuff, and they, you know, take them, take it out soon, take it out it's soon. The movie right. version, yeah, yeah, it was great. And then so uh, that's his sci-fi world. So you have his musical yeah. world, you have a sci-fi world, then you have uh, his drama world, and you, you know, like things like. Uh, or somebody up there likes me, which is a classic fifties film with Paul first Paul, Paul Newman's first real, he became a star. Yeah. Of that film. And then you had, uh, well, of course, uh, the sand pebbles, which was kind of a big brawling sixties, uh, yeah. military thing, which I personally liked a lot, but another yeah. big movie, you know? Yeah. And then you had, um, 
Well, his horror films. You yeah, know? I was going to bring that up. That's yeah. an early one too. The his his very first film, and you know he took over a from you know Jacques Tournier and Val Luton uh, Cat People movie, and he made yeah. Curse of the Cat People. It was like a sequel to it, sort of, which was a very <laughs> effective film and then he made the movie that is on my list of scariest of movies best. ever made and will oh always God, be so there good. i think better what than any movie think. kathy haunting of hill house no. that was the haunting no, the, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's the, the haunting. haunting which is yeah. so i mean every shot is so amazing looking and i i just love the I think something about the retro feel of it is what makes it work. Cause when you see some remakes of the same story and the same basic films, they don't seem quite, they don't seem quite as, I don't know. Is it the analog aspect that just makes it seem more real and creepy? I you will know, say I this. Know. I will say this. Watch, watch the haunting, you know, Robert Wise mm -hmm. is from 63. Then watch the remake from 1999 with Liam Neeson. <laughs> Jan Talk about everything Missing you could do point. wrong in a Not remake. <laughs> It's like this horrible CGI. Nothing about it is scary. No. It's just a groaner. Right. Whereas the first one, less is more. There's a great scene where she's Very like good. in bed in her in her oh, room, and she, okay. there's something yeah. in the corner. Mm -hmm. And that happens to all of us. We're like half sleep, like, half. What is that? Like, what? I've seen it. Like, is, is that a person? In and the it corner? feels like it's moving because your eyes yeah. are kind of trying to figure. Or it you out. make right. faces. I think one of the yeah. you know evolutionary traits of humans is that we're able to spot patterns of faces because. <laughs> I guess yeah. it takes us back to when we had to worry about predators all the time and we're able to find a face hidden in the in the chaos of the background and I think the idea of seeing a face in the darkness kind of half hidden or something yeah. that there's like the molding in the wall mm -hmm. like these leaves and these patterns mm -hmm. and he pushes in on it with the camera and you hear these voices talking you can't tell what they're saying really but yeah. that's one of the scariest images so because you're he lingers on that image long enough and he moves in on it that you start seeing a face in there and a mouth yeah, that's so open creepy. and it sound you you feel like the sounds you're hearing are coming out of that mouth which is yeah. weird you take it for granted that the yeah. sounds that you're hearing are coming out of that mouth i love mm -hmm. that scene it's and it's, you know i read the book too and i loved yeah. it and I, oh, that yeah. scene in the book where she's holding her friend's hand because yes. they're afraid because and then you find the friend's actually like across the room or across not the even room. close to her and she's like yeah. whose hand am i holding that is a great like when i first read that i never forgot that and then when yes. it was in the movie it was like oh my god it's just what it's an never invasive thing that. so if yeah. you need to watch a version hand. watch this one <laughs> not only is it great, all, it's that's like a it, great. Just, it just works better and it feels yeah. retro and cool and that's what it should be in an old mansion it should just be yeah and there's some scenes in the outside when you know just the just this it's cre it, if you want creepy this is it yeah. it, it's very, very creepy haunting. and mm -hmm. it's haunting and he knows it's how to haunting. direct actors and that's the other thing it's like the yeah. actors in this the film cast, yeah. they come first they're, they're great in this yeah. it's very realistic it's yeah. very serious it's there's no camp here at all this is like right. we're taking this as a very serious film mm -hmm. uh where these very strong characters, well-rounded characters, are in this impossible situation. So, if you, I think Sorry, of a few lines. I'm laughing. At <laughs> <laughs> okay. we're, we're peeking around. Ooh. Yeah, I okay. can't see. I'm, I'm totally. Mark's covered. totally which, obliterated. Which is, which is not a bad thing. I know. People um, listening to the podcast, are like, what the hell are they talking about? Yeah. <laughs> So if there is a through line, if the through line is not that he, you know, does different genres, the through line is he knows each one of these genres so well as a director. He says, I know how to make it scary. I know how yeah. to make it exuberant and fun. I know how to make it uh, challenging, you know, with the yeah. science fiction stuff. So uh, I think the through line is he just knows, a, he knows how to direct right. characters yeah. and make things look It doesn't look matter better. what genre. You right. just He's put a good fantastic characters, filmmaker. know where to put the camera, know how to make a scene dynamic, and you can direct anything, really. He understood and, cinema. He understood yeah. what it was, what the machine was that makes movies, how they work. Yeah. I think it comes from him starting out as an editor. Mm -hmm. um, I know editors, and I and I totally appreciate the magic that editors can, yeah. can work. I've seen um, raw assemblages of footage, and then I've then I've seen what the editors do with that, and I'm yeah. like, how the hell did you do that? It's, <laughs> it's a um, editors are the ones who save the movie it's in magical. a lot of cases. Um, some directors really um, mm -hmm. struggle with like, do I do a master shot here, or do I do close-ups, or do I tell this story from over her shoulder, or do mm -hmm. I tell it 
the story from a low angle or or do I shoot this? And so they'll just shoot a bunch of different things. And then, the, you know, they shoot some different things and then they get it all together and they take it to the editor and they go, here, take this. Here you go. Here's a pile of stuff. Bye bye. And they run, you know, but make it having work. come from editing. I think what he, I, I imagine, I don't know because I wasn't there, but um, I good. imagine he probably was very efficient on set. He probably mm -hmm. came in under budget because yeah. he was an editor. I imagine producers really liked him because he probably only shot what he needed yeah. and knew what he needed. Yeah. Because yeah. he's an editor, he's like, we don't need to yeah. waste time with a master shot for this because right. this is blah, 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 you know. And because I know the ratio, you know, I would love to know his what they call ratio of how much yeah. footage is shot compared to how much is used in the actual film. Some mm -hmm. people like Stanley Kubrick. Who was not an <laughs> editor? So much wasted film. <laughs> yeah. Shot, you know, his his ratio was like ten billion to one or something like yeah. that. <laughs> yeah, where he would shoot sixty takes or something. Yeah. And, There's a uh, million but, different ways to make a great film. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And Clint Eastwood is a guy him. that like what well, next next. You know, he's he's yeah. supposed to yeah. just on. crank him out. You know, so yeah. um, he knows what he wants. They That's would right. do. They would work in rehearsals. A lot of times, directors who came from stage or or were informed by stage. Yeah. would work it out you know you work it out before when you're not paying for film you you block mm -hmm. it out you practice yeah. you rehearse you block it you figure out what what you want to do to tell the story yeah. a director will get the actors in a room and get them to act it out and just kind of see where they move and how yeah. they move and he'll be over there going you know doing that thing where he's trying to frame it you know yeah. and trying to figure out okay this we're going to do this and so they figure stage informed directors do a lot of um pre yes uh-oh rehearse okay. type stuff that's right and then when they get on the set right. through it they're like i already know what i want that's like right. editors like robert wise you know <laughs> <laughs> Robert Wise is amazing. What? Yeah, so you know, it glitched a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. What it's okay. Does, we got it. it. It filled in. <laughs> yeah. Okay. What this does is podcast. Hopefully, for people who don't know his films, to go out yeah. and watch them. What it yeah. does for me, you okay, probably seen him and didn't know it was one guy. Right. Yeah. Makes me want to go seen. out and watch a yeah. drama screen like right now. You know that I kind know, of stuff. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, but yeah, he's a great. I think you know he's somebody that if you don't know his films or don't know that he did directed these films, it's just good to know that he is a guy that yeah. directed a lot of classics that you probably have seen or at least have heard mm -hmm. of. So Robert Wise deserves it. Yeah. Deserves the, the same guy who made the sound of music made the haunting. Oh my God. <laughs> <Insane>. <laughs> three, like three years, of, no, two years apart, 63 yeah. from the haunting and 65 for sound yeah. of music. So and could there be two movies that are more different? <laughs> <laughs> That's insane. <laughs> wow. Well, that was, and uh, Burke, thanks for you know bringing this one up because yes. that's a good, this is a good uh, topic. And, um, you know, it's fun to focus fun on, to, a, on a artist work, you know, like to take one artist and follow their work. And that's whether right. it's an actor, because I, I think we should do this with actors too. I think it would be kind yeah. of fun to just take an actor and follow their work. We can have an see. artist series. We'll yeah. start making yeah. that a thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And just to see how diverse that actor is or how how much the same they play the same character That's in right. every movie they do or whatever you know That's right. it's interesting to follow to follow a thread totally through, is. The career to watch years, a career happen career. Yeah. yeah yeah well that was fun so right. thanks for watching our robert wise filmography a uh, retrospective of course right. we just dabbled on a few there's plenty more so we could do and a if, whole episode about each <laughs> one of those movies yeah. we I'm should sure. do reviews of each film and <laughs> and let us know in the comments what, what's your favorite robert wise film we mentioned a bunch but look through his imdb there oh, might be some that we didn't mention there's plenty more for yeah, sure we yeah. mentioned a lot Did of iconic ones any? oh we oh, missed made born to kill with lawrence tierney our Insane. old pal yeah yeah he's yeah, done yeah, lots of great that's stuff that's Borders, yeah. 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 So be sure and let us know what your favorite is, and maybe we'll do a review of it. Run yeah. silent, run deep. <laughs> yeah. Classic. Don Rickles. Okay, everybody. Yeah. See you guys later. <laughs> Take care. Take care, See everybody. You.